Southern Technologies Corporation presents the SmartScan 2600 AEI Reader System. Southern Technologies Corporation has been providing products to Class 1 railroads for more than 48 years. Developing and providing long-term support for the products required by our valued customers is the focus of daily operations. Southern Technologies Corporation is located in Chattanooga, Tennessee and operates from a modern, well-equipped 21,000 square foot facility strategically located adjacent to major transportation routes. All product development, fulfillment, and support operations by Southern Technologies Corporation are in accordance with our registered ISO 9001 Quality Assurance Program. The following training presentation provides a general overview of the 2600 series AEI reader system. Topics including system operation, hardware components, and the user interface. For additional information, please refer to the STC Model 2600 Series AEI Reader Reference Guide. The 2600 AEI controller is the center of operations for both mainline and yard AEI systems. It provides dedicated real-time acquisition of input from trackside and auxiliary equipment. It also provides ultimate flexibility for data acquisition, processing, storage, and transmission to remote host systems. STC offers various configuration packages, ranging from legacy upgrades to complete turnkey site installation. A 2600 AEI reader system detects and scans passing trains using RFID technology. When a train clears the site, the wheel transition and tag data is analyzed and processed to construct the final consist records. These records are stored in system memory and can be used to generate various reports. If enabled, T94 formatted reports will be transmitted to a host computer via the system modem or network connection. A typical AEI reader system consists of battery subsystem, AEI controller, RF module, two antennas, wheel detectors, and a present subsystem. The standard configuration uses one RF module with a multiplexed output. A second RF module can be added for dedicated reader applications. For mainline and yard applications, two Tiefenbach double wheel detectors are required to accurately report stop and reverse train movements. The wheel detectors are spaced 9 foot 6 inches apart to form a truck trap. The AEI antennas are mounted center line between the wheel detectors. The truck trap serves to isolate each vehicle truck and provide the information required to construct the standing order consist for a train. At those sites with straight pull-through traffic only, one Tiefenbach double wheel detector will suffice. The wheel detector should be mounted in line with the antennas, otherwise an offset value will need to be entered in the setup menu. The following AEI system components are housed in an appropriate wayside enclosure. 2600 AEI controller, system modem, 2600 750 RF module, 24 volt battery bank with charger, 2600-600 surge panel, presence detection equipment. The 2600 AEI controller, which is modular, can be broken down into two basic sub-assemblies, the 2600-700 processor module and the 2600-500 chassis assembly. The 2600 controller can be ordered in various configurations. The standard configuration features a multiplexed reader and an industrial modem. The 2600-700 processor is the brains of the system. It contains two processor cards, each with specific software and functionality, the front-end processor, FEP, and the companion industrial PC, IPC. The front-end processor is a proprietary microcontroller board developed by STC specifically for AEI integration. This board provides the real-time control and data acquisition for all trackside devices. It is a combination processor system interface board with signal conditioning, communications, filtering, and surge suppression components as required. The FEP software develops data records that include presence, speed, direction, axle count, and timing and tag information in near real time. It forwards these records to the IPC board for further processing and storage. The industrial PC is an off-the-shelf component with a custom Linux operating system. The AEI reader functionality is implemented via proprietary software programs. The IPC features include S918A, S9203A compliant CONSYS development and report transmission, remote and local system setup and diagnostics, menu-driven user interface, 
non-volatile file management system for long-term storage of up to 300 consists, and Ethernet connectivity. The 2600-500 chassis provides a mounting base for various system components. Its integral wiring harness furnishes all necessary power and signal interconnections. The connector panel allows for the attachment of external peripheral devices. The chassis includes docking bays for the TransCore AI1200 reader logic board. The chassis houses a SonAlert buzzer, which is used in conjunction with the audible test function to assist with tag read validation. The assembly also provides mounting for various system modems. In operation, the readers create a radio frequency field that provides a constant carrier wave to activate a tag that is present in the field. When activated, the tag modulates the carrier wave in accordance with the pre-programmed data in the tag and reflects the modulated signal back to the reader. The reader receives the return signal, processes the radio signal into usable characters, and sends them to a host computer. RF power is normally off until train presence is detected. Vehicles and equipment are tagged with wireless transponders. The 2600 reader subsystem reads these electronic tags as they pass a stationary antenna. The reader then transfers the tag data to the 2600, where the data is processed and stored. RFID AEI systems use non-contact, not line-of-sight technology. Tags can be read despite inclement weather and otherwise poor visual conditions. The two major tag reader components are the AI1200 logic board and the AR2200 RF module. The AI1200 is housed within the 2600 AEI controller module. The AR2200 is housed in the 2600-750 RF module. The AI1200 logic board is paired with the 2600-200 interface power supply in a board stack configuration. The board stack can be accessed from the upper docking bay of the 2600-500 controller chassis. The AR2200 can be accessed in the 2600-750 RF module chassis. In the standard configuration, the RF unit is set up in a mode in which its RF output is multiplexed between two antennas. If multiple AEI readers are used within 100 meters of each other, a minimum of 2 MHz channel separation should be used. The surge panel assembly provides a primary ground plane with surge protection for the RF, digital I.O., telco, and presence detector. The components used meet ARIMA specifications. The 2600 AEI reader system requires an operating voltage of 24 VDC at 5 amps. The battery charger and battery type can be configured to meet customer requirements. Train presence can be accomplished by using any of the equipment types listed. If other audio track circuits overlay the location, a non-interfering frequency should be selected. Most SmartScan mainline AEI systems use the Zucanut Zepic 3 presence detector. At trackside, the track circuit is simply two wires attached to the rails, with one wire being attached to each rail. The track circuit senses equidistance in both directions. The wires are attached directly opposite each other, centered between the wheel detectors. For single Tiefenbach wheel detector sites, attach track circuit wires immediately adjacent to the wheel detector. The Zepic 3 is normally shipped with the 10 kHz frequency. At multi-track locations or where 10 kHz may interfere with other signal frequencies, the optional frequencies are available. To calibrate the Zepic 3, place 0.6 ohm shunt across the rails at the desired pickup distance, a minimum of 50 feet and a maximum of 150 feet. Press and hold the blue receiver calibration button until the LED indicator starts blinking. Release the receiver calibration button and the LED will stop blinking. The LED indicator will turn on and stay on when the unit has successfully calibrated. This process can take up to 45 seconds to complete. Lift the shunt and the LED should turn off. The Model L1300R is a single channel shelf mount type inductive loop vehicle detector. It incorporates a microcontroller that monitors and processes signals from the loop lead-in circuit. When presence is detected, the processor actuates a normally open relay output. System components that are mounted on or near the rail include wheel detectors, AEI antennas, track circuit, presence loop, or radar-based field detectors. For installations that use two Tiefenbach double wheel detectors, each detector body is positioned approximately 57 inches either side of the antenna center line to establish the proper wheel detector spacing of 9 feet and 6 inches inside to inside measurement. 
If the site uses one double wheel detector, install it on the antenna center line. Bracket installation is the preferred mounting method. This avoids drilling holes in the rail web and allows for precise alignment of the wheel detectors. STC highly recommends use of the Tiefenbach SSK6 bracket for permanent placement of the wheel detector. The bracket provides a simple means for attaching the wheel detector to the rail, as well as a means for adjusting the wheel detector to its optimal location, both vertically and laterally. The proper installation and calibration of the wheel detector is critical to achieve optimal performance. A properly installed wheel detector will be mounted on the gauge side of the rail. It should be parallel with the top of the rail at a distance of one and three quarter inches below the crown. A torque wrench should be used to avoid warping or breaking the clamp mount. Color-coded plates are included with each wheel detector to provide proper horizontal spacing for the various rail profiles. The 2600-800 placement gauge can be used to mark holes for a drilled rail installation. Mounting holes are to be drilled parallel to the foot of the rail with a drill diameter of 13 millimeters. Hole dimension should be 145 millimeters center to center. Mount the detector with the proper colored spacer to the web of the rail as depicted and tighten to a torque of 50 to 60 newton meters. The wheel detector calibration procedure requires that you have on hand a 2600-800 wheel detector gauge and a 2600-810 alignment status panel. The 2600-800 provides a fixed, stable target over the wheel detector sensor body that is perfectly parallel to the railhead. The 2600-810 provides a high visible status display that is viewable from the rail. Used together, they make the wheel detector calibration a simple one-man operation. Locate and place the 2600-800 wheel detector gauge across rails such that the large gauge plate is positioned directly over the Tiefenbach wheel detector. Make sure the gauge is properly seated on the railhead as shown. Locate the 2600-810 status panel. Remove the sheet metal cover from the 2600 controller by releasing the draw latches on either side. Gently place the 2600-810 sensor plate over the face of the 2600 controller and slide the bushings into the holes in the front LED panel as depicted. Secure the sensor plate by hooking the springs and the slots in the controller base plate. Plug the AC adapter into a wall outlet and then connect the power plug to the jack on the front of the sensor plate. Position the 2600-810 carrying case on the floor of the bungalow such that the LED display can be viewed from the track. At the bottom of the wheel detector, unscrew the knurled protective plastic nuts off the adjustment screws. Locate the brass adjustment tool that came packaged with your Tiefenbach wheel detector. Screw on the adjustment tool and tighten without pushing the adjustment screw out of its adjustment protector. Force should not be used to turn the adjustment screw, otherwise the adjustment protection may be damaged. Push the adjustment tool upwards to unlock the protection mechanism. Calibration should begin with detectors in the inactive state. LED indicators located on the 2200-810 status panel should be off. If necessary, deactivate the detector by reducing sensitivity. Turn the adjustment screw to left. Each element of the dual detector should be set to the activation threshold with the target, large gauge plate, in place. Begin with T01, which is the northernmost or easternmost detector. Slowly turn the adjustment screw to the right until the detector just activates. The corresponding LED indicator on 2600-810 will light. Next, set the T02 through T04 detectors to activation threshold in a like manner. The wheel detectors are now calibrated. Remove the adjustment tool, replace the knurled nut, and lightly tighten. The three most common antennas used with the 2600 AEI reader system are the Sinclair SRL440, the Sinclair SRL470, and the Scala HP9915 Parapanel. There are two antennas per system. Each antenna is to be installed with its face parallel to the rails, approximately 10 feet from the center of the track, 3.5 feet above the top of the rails, centered between the wheel detectors, directly opposite of each other. The SP440 system is a compact, radome enclosed log periodic antenna. This antenna should be mounted horizontally for the correct polarization. It is commonly used on yard systems. The SP470 series are compact, radome enclosed panel antennas. When pole mounted, the antenna connector should face down for horizontal polarization. This antenna can be used for mainline installations. The Scala HP9915 is a horizontally polarized panel antenna when installed as shown. 
This is the recommended antenna for mainline installations. FSJ4 is the typical coaxial cable used for antenna connections. Straight connectors are provided for direct connection to the surge panel in the equipment enclosure. The right angle connectors are for connection to the antennas. Pictured are the recommended Superflex installation tools. The automated cable stripper prepares the FSJ4 Heliax cable for connector installation. It removes the cable jacket, outer conductor, and foam. At the same time, it also cuts back and chamfers the inner conductor to the correct dimensions for connector attachment. The use of the torque wrench is recommended, as the O-ring seals can be damaged by over-tightening the connector. Heliax connectors are designed to ensure system integrity in the harshest of outdoor conditions. They meet the toughest environmental standards, such as IP68. If additional protection is required, weatherproofing kits are available. This diagram represents a typical layout for a single track site. The highlighted Option A feature depicts the transducer placement for those sites using a single dual element wheel detector. This diagram represents a typical layout for a double track site. This diagram depicts a typical presence loop installation. Pictured here is an elevation drawing for a typical double track site. This drawing depicts a typical component layout for a wayside enclosure. This diagram details the interconnections between the various components of the 2600 AEI reader system. The user interface for the Model 2600 AEI Reader System consists of the LED status panel, which provides a snapshot of the system status, the serial interface menu, which provides access to system status, reports, and the system setup options. Menus are available via a system serial port and or network interface. The 2600-700 module status panel is designed to assist maintenance personnel with system function diagnostics. It contains 26 high-visibility LEDs grouped by function to provide a quick determination of the system's overall status. Additionally, the front panel is equipped with reset switches for the FEP and IPC. The leftmost column of LEDs provides voltage indicators for the system power and also COP LEDs to provide operational status indications for the FEP and IPC boards. The reader status groups indicate reader power, RF active for each antenna, and RF lock. The fourth LED column indicates the status of the presence input and each wheel detector. It also has an indicator to display when AC power is present. The rightmost LED column provides status indicators for the system's configurable outputs and for the audible test function. The 2600 controller chassis houses a Sonalert buzzer, which is used in conjunction with the audible test function to assist with tag read validation. When the audio test function is enabled, the Sonalert will signal an audible alert when an AEI tag is present in the read field. Local access to the system menus is through serial port COM2. Remote access is possible through both the WAN network interface and through the RJ11 landline modem port. The LAN network interface is intended for interconnection between multiple Model 2600 readers at a given site. The WAN network interface is intended for connecting a Model 2600 reader to a customer's network for data reporting purposes. A null modem cable is required to connect a computer directly to one of the system serial ports. Communications are established with the terminal emulation program, such as HyperTerminal, ProCom Plus, TerraTerm, or Zoc. The COM settings are 19.2, N, 8, 1. Upon successful connection to the Model 2600, the login prompt will be presented. Login options are Guest, Tech, or System. When logged into the system as Guest, system reports and logs are available for printing and review. The default password for the Guest identifier is Guest at 2600. When logged into the system as Tech, system reports and logs are available for printing and review. In addition, the parameters that govern system operations are available for modification. Such parameters include site configuration and reporting session configuration. The default password for the tech identifier is tech at 2600. 
When logged into the system with the System ID, System Administrator options are added, such as the ability to set the passwords for each of the three login identifiers and the ability to execute system software updates. The default password for the system identifier is System at 2600. The system's main menu is presented once the system login process has been completed. Available options are the Report menu, the Setup menu, the Session Configuration menu, and the System Functions menu. Depending on login method, some of these menu options may not be available. The Setup menu provides access for review and modification of the system's settable parameters related to the train scanning process. If the setup parameters were previously downloaded from the 2600 and stored on a host computer, they can be reloaded using the Load Reader Setup command. The Track Hardware Configuration menu provides access to the setup parameters that affect the operations of the wheel detectors, the present subsystem, and the AEI Reader module or modules. The Session Configuration menu provides access to the parameters that control the automated reporting functions of the system. Reporting sessions are used to manage the process of transferring data from the Model 2600 reader to remote computers. Five independent sessions are available for managing CONSYS data reporting. Two other sessions are available for managing the reporting of system maintenance-related information. Various parameters can be configured for each session, including phone number, site ID, and communication protocol. The System Functions menu presents system-level configuration and house cleaning options. This menu is available from the main menu. Some options shown on this menu will be present only when a user is logged in with the system ID. The Configure Network Interface option presents the parameters required to communicate via an Ethernet network. The Configure Time Sync with NTP Server option provides a means for synchronizing a computer's clock with a known good source that is accessible via a network connection. The Delete All Train Data option provides a means for clearing out the Model 2600 reader's train data directory. The System Reset menu option provides options for resetting, rebooting various system components, the Front End Processor, FEP, the IPC, and the AI1200 reader board. The Telnet Pass-Through option provides a means for communicating via Telnet with other Model 2600 readers that are connected via an Ethernet network. The Serial Pass-Through option provides a means for communicating with a device that's connected to the Model 2600 reader's COM2 serial port. The Reader Module Direct Communications Link option provides a means for communicating directly with the system's AI1200 tag reader board. This access to the AI1200 board provides for manual turning the tag reader's RF on, which can be helpful when troubleshooting tag acquisition issues. The Passwords menu option provides the means for changing the passwords for each of the different system login identifiers, Guest, Tech, and System. This option will appear in this menu only when the user is logged in as System. The Software Update option provides a means for updating the Model 2600 Reader system software. This option appears in this menu only when the user is logged in as System. The Track Hardware Signal Status option provides a series of snapshots of the state of the wheel detector and presence inputs. The Network Interfaces Configuration menu provides access to the menus that enable setup of the Model 2600 Reader's two Ethernet ports, as well as the domain name server addresses to be used by the reader. The LAN network interface is intended for interconnection between multiple Model 2600 readers at a multi-track site. The WAN network interface is intended for connecting a Model 2600 reader to a customer's network for system access and for data reporting purposes. The Report menu provides access to the data stored on the Model 2600, as well as information regarding the system's current status and recent operations. From the Report menu, data can be viewed in the following formats. Summary data that provides an overview of the train data currently stored. Summary information for each consist is presented, one line per consist. Consist detail data that presents the vehicle-by-vehicle -vehicle standing order of a selected train, with AEI ID information as well as vehicle-specific data, such as axle count. T94 formatted reports. Diagnostic reports at both summary and detail levels, geared primarily for isolating the causes of operational problems. The Train Summary report can be printed by selecting the Train Summary options located on the Report menu. The first column is the Presence Failure Indicator. An asterisk indicates a present system failure. The Date and Time columns indicate arrival times of each train. The Lead Vehicle ID column contains the owner code and car ID of the lead vehicle. 
If no tag was read on the first vehicle, this field will be blank. The next columns list the car count, axle count, speed, direction, and tag counts for each train. The tags read fields and the car count field should be within a few counts of each other. The duration column lists the elapsed time in seconds it took for a train to enter and exit a reader site. The T94 transmit column indicates the reporting status of each active session for each train. The last column is the train movement type indicator. The train detail report can be printed by selecting one of the train detail options located on the report menu. The car number column contains the sequential number of each vehicle detected in the train consist. The vehicle ID column contains the owner code and car number fields decoded from the AEI tag associated with that vehicle. If the vehicle ID cannot be resolved to one legitimate identifier, this field will be empty. The EGC column contains the equipment group code as decoded from the identifying AEI tag. In this column, a 5 indicates that the vehicle was a locomotive. A 19 indicates that it was a rail car. The number of axles column contains the axle count of the vehicle as determined by the 2600 reader's consist breakout logic. The number of trucks and number of platforms columns contain those counts that the consist breakout logic has determined are associated with each vehicle. The tag axles column contains the axle count as decoded from the vehicle's identifying AEI tag. Where wheel detector issues are suspected, this field can be used to double check num axles field, which was derived from the wheel detector timing information. The direction column indicates the direction each vehicle was traveling as it exited the reader site. This field becomes significant when reviewing reports for consist on which switching operations have occurred. The speed and length columns contain the calculated speed and length for each vehicle based upon wheel detector signal timing. The handshake's antenna 0 and antenna 1 columns reflect the handshake values recorded for the identifying tag of each vehicle. The term handshakes refers to the number of times a given tag was read by the tag reader as it passed through the RF field. The format of the T94 report is specified by the AAR standard S9203A. In the T94 report, the AEM record contains summary information for the train represented by the report. There is one RRE record per vehicle on the train consist. The EOC record at the end of the report contains a count of the number of characters that appear in the report. The T94 report can be printed by selecting one of the T94 options located on the report menu. The system status report provides an overall snapshot of the current configuration of the reader system. A copy of this report should be captured and retained after the system has been configured. The purpose of the event log in the Model 2600 AEI reader is to provide a means for tracking the operations that have been performed by the system and for logging specific error events encountered by the system. The event log report can be printed by accessing the Event Log menu option located on the Report menu. The Model 2600 AEI reader maintains the maintenance log for the purpose of supporting the maintenance reporting requirements. Refer to the AAR standard S9203A. The maintenance log report can be printed by accessing the maintenance log menu option located on the report menu. The diagnostic train summary report can be printed by accessing the report menu option located on the report menu. The train number column contains the chronologically sequential number assigned to each train as they are processed by the 2600 reader. The number of cars column indicates the number of vehicles, locomotives and rail cars that were identified in the consist. The direction column indicates the direction that the train was traveling as it exited the reader site. The speed column indicates the fastest and slowest speeds recorded for the train as it crossed the 2600 reader site. The number of axles segment is comprised of three columns. The train column reflects the number of complete wheel transitions that were detected by the 2600 reader's wheel detectors. The T01 and T02 and the T03 and T04 columns reflect the number of times that the individual wheel detector elements were activated as the train crossed the reader site. At mainline sites, where pull-through moves are prevalent, any time that the count in these number of axles fields differ, this is an indication of a fault with one or more wheel detector elements. This could indicate that the wheel detectors are in need of either mechanical or electrical alignment. The filtered pulses column reflects the number of noise spikes that were filtered from the wheel detector inputs. 
Where Tiefenbach zero-speed wheel detectors are used, any accumulation of counts in these columns indicates a wheel detector element that is in the process of failing. The antenna zero and antenna one columns reflect the number of AEI tags that were read as a train crossed the 2600 reader site. The counts in these fields should be within a few counts of the car count recorded for the train. Low counts could be indicative of a failing AR2200 RF module or of a damaged antenna or coax cabling. The average handshake column indicates the average number of times the tags were read by the specified antenna as the train passed. These counts are indicative of the general health of the tag reader subassembly. The movement column reflects the train type of the movement recorded for each train. The movement codes are defined by the T94 reporting specification, S9203A. The T94 reporting session section contains four columns. The number column indicates the session number. Each active reporting session will be represented in this section of the report. The transfer attempts column indicates the number of attempts that have been made to transfer a T94 report to the specified host. The northeast and southwest columns reflect the possibility that two different T94 reports could be generated for the same consist. This would occur where a switching move was recorded and net changes in the consist were detected in both directions. A dash listed in either column indicates that there was no reportable movement recorded in that direction. A result code of S indicates a successful file transfer to the host and will appear in the column appropriate to its reported movement. The Diagnostic Train Detail Report is a valuable resource for information that can prove useful when diagnosing problems that can arise at an AEI reader site. The header of the report provides summary level information for a specific train, such as train speed, wheel detector activity counts, and tag counts. The details section of the report provides highly specific information regarding the tag acquisition process and wheel detector activity timing. In this section of the report, the information specific to each car is presented in a block of records. These records can be broken down into three types based upon the information that they provide, car level information, tag acquisition related information, and wheel detector timing information. The top left section of the report header shows the basic summary information for the train, date and time of arrival, train direction and length, axle count and car count, and the speeds, maximum, minimum, and average, recorded for the train. The top right section of the report header displays a breakdown of the train makeup by vehicle type, locomotives versus rail cars, and provides a count of vehicles on which no reportable AEI identifier was found. This same information is included in the header of each T94 report generated by the 2600 reader. The bottom left section of the report header displays the details of the wheel detector activity for the train. The pair A and pair C counts reflect complete wheel transitions across each of the dual element wheel detectors. The sensing elements within the A pair wheel detector are labeled T01 and T02. The elements within the C pair wheel detector are labeled T03 and T04. For mainline pull-through traffic, the T01 through T04 counts and the pair A and pair C counts should all be equal. If they are not, a misaligned wheel detector may be indicated. The bottom right section of the report header displays summary information for the tag reader subsystem. Where the tag count fields differ greatly, a problem with an antenna or its cabling could be indicated. Where the average handshakes fields are consistently low, a problem with the tag reader RF module could be indicated. The Details section of the Diagnostic Train Detail Report presents wheel detector activity and tag acquisition information on a car-by-car -car basis. This information is broken down into Vehicle Summary Level Details, AEI Tag Read Information, and Wheel Detector Activity Data. The Vehicle Summary Line information includes the number of axles detected by the wheel detectors, the number of trucks and the number of platforms associated with the vehicle, the AEI identifier of the vehicle, the direction of travel, the vehicle orientation, vehicle speed and length. The T94 fields reflect the car number, axle count, and tag count as they were reported in the train's T94 report. The vehicle start and end time are displayed in terms of the number of milliseconds that had elapsed since the arrival of the train at the site. Associated with the vehicle summary information is the truck timing information line. This line provides positional information regarding the leading and trailing trucks of a vehicle. This information is used in the process of isolating the correct AEI tag to use for identifying a vehicle, 
where multiple tags have been associated with that vehicle. This situation commonly arises at double track locations. The AEI tag data line provides information specific to each of the AEI tags, or tag pairs, that have been associated with a vehicle. This line includes information extracted from the tag itself, including the owner code and vehicle number fields, the axle count field, and the equipment group code field. The tag timing information fields indicate at what point in time each tag was read. These timing fields, like all of the detailed data time-related fields, are referenced to the point in time at which the train arrived at the AEI site. In the example shown, for the vehicles presented there was no tag read by Antenna Zero. This is indicated by the zeros that appear in the Antenna Zero's timestamp field location. The tag that was read by Antenna 1 was read 3,646 milliseconds, or 3.6 seconds, from the point of train arrival. The Wheel Detector Activities section displays the timing information for each wheel that is seen by each wheel detector. Each wheel detector data record includes a field that indicates which wheel detector generated the report, the A pair or the C pair, an indication of how the two sense elements within a wheel detector fired as the wheel crossed the wheel detector, timestamps that reflect the time at which each wheel detector's sense element was active and when it was inactive, fields that record the width of the pulse generated by each wheel as it crossed the wheel detector. The pulse width fields shown in this report are especially significant as indicators of the health of the wheel detectors. Any consistent imbalance of more than 5 milliseconds between the pulse width values displayed here is an indication that an imbalance exists between the two sense elements. Such an imbalance can be caused by either a mechanical misalignment or an electrical misalignment. This concludes the training presentation for the SmartScan Model 2600 AEI Reader System. For more information, please contact Southern Technologies at 423-892-3029 or reach us on the web at www.southern-tech.com.